Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Jorge Perez Palencia, a research associate of swine nutrition at South Dakota State University. So Jorge, before we get started, though our history goes back a few years from doing research together at Purdue, would you mind giving the audience members who are less familiar with you a short introduction about yourself? Sure. Hey, Clay. Hey, everyone. Um, thank you, first, for the invitation. Um, it's a great opportunity to share uh, some knowledge and to interact with people. So thank you for that. My name is Jorge. I am from Colombia. I did my undergrad over there in animal science. Then I moved to uh, Brazil when I did where I did my master in my PhD, focusing on swine nutrition. During my PhD, I spent some time um, in Purdue University, where I actually met Clay, and we had really fun doing some uh, nursery trials over there. Uh, after that, I moved back to Brazil. I finished my PhD in 2018, and then I started a postdoc position with Chris Levet here at South Dakota State University. Um, and then in 2021, I moved to a new position uh, that they call the Richard Associate, where I am doing research in mainly in swine nutrition, but also a little bit of poultry um, with the main focus in evaluation of ingredients and additives for swine and poultry diets. So I read your study about arginine supplementation following weaning stress. Would you mind telling us about that study? Sure. So just a little bit the context for this study. So we know that weaning is a very stressful time for pigs and we often see like poor performance, diarrhea, mortality, right? And all these in combination with the fact that we are not using or we are limiting the, the use of antibiotics and uh, single side also is coming up to a point that we need to decrease those concentrations to help during that post weaning period, right? So in that context, we need to look in for strategies to improve pig performance, to help uh, those pigs to make the transition period easier for them. And uh, in that way, so we, we come with the concept of functional amino acids. So we know that and usually we formulate diets thinking in growth performance, thinking in mass deposition, right? But also there is, can be some amino acids required for maintenance, right? And, and this is about where this concept of functional amino acid came. And it's related with those amino acids that in addition to um, be part of muscle deposition, protein synthesis, they are also related with some metabolic functions. And one of them is arginine. And then arginine is usually uh, conditionally essential amino acids. But when become uh, those type of age, like nursery peaks or jump peaks, so they become a uh, limiting amino acid as well. And that's because uh, arginine is part of some regulatory functions, like, for example, nutrient metabolites, uh, immune function, intestinal health, and those type of uh, functions are very important during this transition period because we know in the literature is, is very uh, rich in, in, in notice of the intestinal challenge that those pigs have after winning. So under those challenge moments, so the requirements for these amino acids can be uh, increased, right? And making the endogenous, lo- uh, the endogenous uh, production and the, even the dietary supplement or the dietary proportion that we usually have in, in, the, in the corn, soybean milk, making that deficiency and needed the supplementation or making the need for the supplementation of this amino acid. So that is like a general context of of that. And if you look in today a, a regular like feeding program for nursery pigs, we don't consider like arginine has the like a, like a, the potential amino acid to improve performance to help pigs in the transition period after weaning. So with that, so the goal of this study was uh, to determine what are the requirements for, for arginine of those pigs, especially during the three first weeks after weaning. So what we did was uh, use, uh, we formulated a basal, uh, basal diet, right? And then that basal diet, we meet NRC requirements that is right now for the first or three weeks after weaning is around 0.68% of SID arginine. 
And at that, for that basal diet, we then supplement 0.3, 0.6, 0.9, and 1.2% of arginine, L-arginine, right? And with that, so we have at the end five different diets with a total of 0.68%, um, 0.68%, 0 0.98%, 1.28%, 1.58%, 1 and 1.88% of SID lysine, lysine. Oh, sorry, arginine. So um, with that, so we uh, evaluate performance of those pigs during the whole nursery period. Something uh, particularly important to let you know is that those diets were fed during the first three weeks, and the other three weeks after after that period, there was just a common diet until the end of the nursery that was at six weeks. Um, with that, we evaluate performance. We do we do we did the regular fecal scoring. Um, then we took some blood samples at day seven, at day fourteen, to measure um, IgA and then also some amino acids. So with that, then just going around the main result from this trial, um, we found out that uh, increasing levels of arginine, they uh, promote a linear or, or quadratic effect in growth performance of those pigs. So as we're increasing arginine, well, what we see is that increasing in average daily gain and general performance during those first three weeks. And when we just go or when we went to the regular diet after those six weeks, those pigs that were supplemented with increasing levels of arginine, they see were uh, having that pattern or having better performance or at least being heavier at the end of the nursery uh, phase. So as for the fecal scoring, so we saw that after 1.3 or that 1.28% of SID arginine. So we saw that those pigs have lot less um, incidence of diarrhea. They have they they were bare like healthy uh, uh, in that setting of, of diarrhea and incidence of diarrhea with less fecal scorings for diarrhea. And for the plasma IgA, so that is something also important to say that uh, in this case we use plasma IgA has a marker for intestinal health or intestinal permeability. We know that IgA is secreted in the lumen, right? Uh, and when the pigs are in this phase, we know that there is uh, uh, increasing impermeability, right? And then that allows that this IgA go to the to the system, right? And that is the reason because we we saw when there is a stress, those increases in IgA concentrations in in the pigs. So what we saw in this study was that actually uh, the supplementation of arginine, or I would say the increasing levels of arginine, decreased those IgA levels. That means that those pigs uh, were the barrier function were less compromised in comparison with other ones that don't have those levels, high levels of or increasing levels of, of arginine. So that is related with IgA. And now when we um, when we saw the plasma data, we still are working on that because um, uh, we have, of course, we have increasing in those argin levels of arginine and the family of amino acids related with arginine. But at the same time, we saw or we are seeing a decrease in other amino acids like lysine, methionine, or the branching amino acids. So we are trying to do another analysis to see if that is related with um, that animals are utilizing or are utilizing more those other amino acids, and that is the the, res the growth performance the growth performance response that we saw, or there is something more going on there with with these amino acid metabolites. So. Entric challenges at weaning can trigger a cycle of poor pig performance. How do you interrupt the cycle? Learn what the teams from Purina and PMI are doing to address the cause of entric challenges and not just the symptoms. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Well, I believe that's all we have time for. So thanks again, Jorge, for coming on the show to share that study with us. 
Yeah, so thank you so, so much for the invitation and thank you for all, uh, thank you for my partners here at the CSU, students, college students in faculty that always support our research and also companies uh, and people, individuals in the company that always support our work. So thank you so much. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.